Hey guys, Quinn from Canada. In today's tutorial, we're going to take a part designed in part design and we're going to turn it into a puzzle. So grab your fuel boys and let's roll her out. To start out, let's load the file from last tutorial. I did make it available on Prusa Printer, so just check the video description if you don't already have it. So now that I got this part loaded, what I want to do is go here and I'm going to rename this body here just for organization's sake. Right click, rename. Part. Now what I want to do is create a new body. So I'll create a new body there and I'll right click on there to say toggle active body. And you can tell when it's active because it should be bold. So it's not bold anymore. So I guess it was active and I just made an oopsie. Now that I've done that, I want to create a new sketch and I want the sketch to be on the same plane as this old drawing. So that's the X, Y plane right here. There you go. It's all highlighted in green for me. Click OK. So now we'll just zoom, 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 zoom in till you're nice, nice and big and clicky this guy right here. You know what it does. There you go. Now we can see our lines and now get the pleasure of breaking my heart. Let's grab our line tool. And you know what? I don't want to go horizontal and vertical. That's kind of boring. I want my puzzle to kind of be at a weird, weird angle. So how about dividing it like this? And you know what? The second one I'll divide. Let's go there. Now you can add more sections if you want. I'm just doing four sections to cut down on the video time. Once you got these two lines laid out, which is your divisions, I'm going to make a second line that kind of follows this line. So let's go here and let's go here. That's close enough for government work. Let's click on our task to make things easier. And I want to make these two lines parallel. And the way I do that is by creating our parallel constraint. So this guy parallel to this guy, constraint pops up, this guy to this guy. And I missed how embarrassing. Redemption. Now the reason why we're making two lines is because of tolerances when it comes to 3D printing. If you want to print this out and you kind of just cut it with zero thickness, these two parts will not mesh together. So by creating this channel, we're actually giving it the tolerance it needs to fit the parts together. So the next thing I want to do is draw another line. Clicky here, clicky here. We'll do another line here, clicky here, clicky here, and clicky here, clicky here. And of course, you know it, clicky and clicky. And of course, we can look at it here and say, okay, how many of these do we have joints? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven beautiful. Now I know what the tolerance on my printer is and I want this to be identical on this one and on this one. And in order to do that, I need to make this line perpendicular because that's going to be our measurement right there. And I'm going to do that by using a perpendicular constraint, clicky and clicky. And I'm going to do the same over here, clicky, clicky and here and you Betcha over here. Clicky, clicky. And of course, you can count them up. One, two, three, four. We are good to go. So the measurement that I'm going to be doing is actually a very small measurement. It is 0 0.15 millimeters. Depending on your printer's tolerance, you might want to up that. So you want to use this constraint this time. This is our fixed length. And the reason I want the fixed length is because I want the length of the line no matter what angle it's on. So I'm going to go here and go 0.15 and you can see how skinny that gets. Oh, that's one skinny guy. I wish I was that skinny. Click here, 0.15. And you should adjust that to whatever your printer is best at. So the next thing we're going to do is we're, we're going to add some kind of barb. So on a puzzle, you'll notice that there's a shape like a, say a circle here. And the reason is because if I cut this right now, this heart can't stay together. So let's click on the create circle and we'll create a barb. So the way I do that is I'll just pick one. So let's say right there and I'm going to pick, make another circle that joins with this guy, almost following it just like that. So this little, I guess, tooth there is what's going to keep it from falling out. And if you use 0.15, on these lines right here, you betcha you want to use 0.15 
right here. So first thing you're going to do is go in here. And in this case, I like to work with a radius. I'm going to click it here and it says six millimeter. You know what? I'm going to knock that down to five. Then I'm going to go down to the next one and I'm going to go 5.15, which will give me 0.15 all the way around. Now, this is where you have to watch out a little bit. If you're going to be 3D printing this, making a movement that switches directions this rapidly can be a little rough and it might miss a little bit over extrude, go a little higher in. So I tend to not make puzzles that are that sharp of an edge. So let's grab the middle here. So we'll just right click to go back to our selection tool. We'll grab this guy here and let's move him out till he's a little nicer shape. So something like that. You still want that little bit. You don't want that to be parallel. You want a little bit of a cut in again, just to hold that in shape. Now that we have our first, I don't know what you want to call it, tongue and groove done. Let's make three more. But before we go all ham, let's plan this out. See how this one goes into this piece. Well, if the other one goes into this piece and into this piece and into this piece, it's going to be a little bit boring. If this one went into this piece, let's do another one into this piece. Let's say like that. And on this one, we'll go out of the piece. So this piece will have two innies. This one will have two outies. And you know what? Now we kind of have to figure out what we want to do here. And let's go an Audi. That looks like a good pattern. So next, of course, I'm going to draw another circle. And I want to make sure it's constrained here to this one. So like this, like this, and like this. Now I'm going to fast forward as I make this guy 0.15 larger than this guy course using our radius tool and I'm going to go back to this first one because it looks a little small and you know what it kind of looks too close to this guy so click on him here and I'm going to go to say seven and his partner I'm going to make 7.15 and of course I can grab by the middle here and I can move them to a, maybe a better location. Like I think that looks a little bit nicer. I'll move this guy around here to be a little nicer. And you know what? Kind of like the way this guy looks right there. And this guy, let's, let's move him closer here. Now that we've done that, we can actually go back here and let's hide our heart just to make things a little bit less confusing. And what we're going to do is zoom in on each one of these individually and use our trim command. So I want to trim off this guy here. I want to trim off this guy here. And think about how this is going. So I want to trim this guy here. And I want to trim off this guy here. And then once we get here, trim here and trim here. And again, go over here, trim this guy and trim this guy. And you know what? This is one thing. See how that kind of looked a little weird. I don't know if that's a graphics glitch or if something's going on. So I'm just going to right click here. I'm going to move this guy. See if the whole thing moves. And then I'll just control Z to put it back. If everything moved, everything's good. So I'm going to fast forward through this again and trim all these up. Now, once you've done all your puzzle pieces like this, don't forget any intersection point like this guy right here. So trim this guy up here, trim this guy here, trim this guy here, and trim this guy here. Once you're done all of this, simply exit your sketch. The next step is we are going to pad the hell out of this guy. And let's go 30. There we go. Now, if we turn our heart back on using spacebar, make sure that this intersects the entire object. So I went from the exact same plane and I made sure I'm overflowing way over this guy. The next step is we're going to be working in a different workbench and we're going to flip over to our parts workbench. And when we're in our parts, we're going to be using the split tool. Let's click here on heart. Then we'll hit control and I'll click on my body. Now that they're both selected, we can go to part and right here you can see split. 
and go slice apart. And after you get that, so you'll get this thing called ex exploded slice. You'll have all these slice pieces together. And this are all individual pieces. But notice one thing. We have five slices here, but only four parts. That's because the part that we drew that contains all our puzzle is still there. So just go through and try to find it individually. So it's not that one. Oh, it's probably that one space bar. And now it should be hidden. Now, once we got this sliced apart, we have several options. We can export each one of these pieces individually. So let's click on slice zero. We just go file export. Let's name it slice zero. And now when we load our slicer, we can just simply import slice zero. And there's our individual piece. Or if you're using Super Slicer or Prusa Slicer, you can export everything at once. So let's just clear this for demonstration's sake. If you click on Exploded Slice right here, and you go File, Export. When you import it, it will say it's a multi-part object detected. On this, just say no. And you will see all your pieces loading in right there. And of course, you can arrange them. And at this point, if you want to print them out one by one, you can simply hide the parts that you don't want to print and print one piece at a time. All right, that's it, guys. Let me know what you think. Is this something you're going to give to your loved ones? We're giving one of these to my little niece. She's going to love it. Everybody's going to give her a piece of the heart, and she's going to be so excited when she sees they all come together. Anyways, leave a comment, leave a like, help me fight the good fight against the YouTube algorithm because it's holding the boot to my head. And like always, boys, have a good one. Nazdrovia.